And when we're talking credit score, we're talking one of the things mm. that is really... Um, for a lot of people, is really something that um, they run away from. Sometimes people don't even want to know what their credit score is. So if, if we are talking minimum um, credit scores and minimum numbers that one should have, you know, before going into uh, um, a home agreement like this, what would you say in, as, a, as, as, as a professional who sits in this and does this almost every day, what are, what are those uh, numbers, the, cre the minimum credit score that the person should look out for or um, should have to either qualify or, or actually be granted this home loan? Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Facebook page. If you're seeing my face for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're listening in on the Twitter spaces, thank you also for joining us tonight as we talk a topic that is really top of mind and on the pulse in terms of the, uh, the property spaces. As usual, I've got an expert who's going to be talking to us and giving us insights on how you can do this effectively. So you can see the topic for tonight is definitely something that um, you want anybody and everybody who is prospectively looking to come into the property space to listen in. We are talking about how to find affordable housing that suits your needs. So this this time right now is the best time to send this link to anybody you think is going to benefit from listening to the conversation tonight. I'm joined by Siam Shongo, who's the sales consultant at Central Developments in Johannesburg. Sia, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking our time to join us and, and, you know, to talk about this. This is one of those things that we all, and I mean all of us, need mm -hmm. to really apply our minds to because um, affordability is one of those things that's very relative and what is affordable to someone else may not be affordable to, to another person. So let's talk um, f uh, what affordable housing is. What does this mean? How do we quantify it? How do we know this is affordable? And how does the category look? Okay, so um, affordable housing, it's um, basically um, households, um, or it's defined as households that have an income of between three and a half thousand um, to run about 23,000 rents per month. So those are the households that will fall in the bracket of affordable housing. Sure. And... If we are talking affordable housing, right, um, is, it, is there a specific kind of house that they get? Or are we saying uh, um, they, are, they are like groups that are specifically uh, targeted with different um, housing options that we have? So anybody that's looking for obviously good quality housing, uh, but that's cost effective. Um, mm -hmm. And um, starting off around about 600000 so it, it's that range that you're looking for a good quality house, um, but that's cost effective. Talk to um, us. Basically. All right. Talk to us typically how the house looks. Two bedroom, three bedrooms. Are we talking a kitchen, a garage? How typically would uh, an affordable house look? Or what is, what is determined okay. as a basic, uh, basic house that um, at least the people in that particular category should be able to afford? All right, so it will basically be, um, it depends on, on the plan of the house. So it could be a two bedroom, one bathroom, a kitchen um, with, a, with a, uh, obviously a living area. Um, obviously um, it has to be of good quality as I've stated, um, but there is no um, definition that it has to be X amount of rooms um, etc but obviously it has to have the the, the necessary um, um, uh, how can I put it the, 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 however however it's built it has to have an area whereby the the, 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 the house has got a living area it's got obviously a bathroom um, you know it's got a, a place where you can prepare food etc so you, we can't say it's two bedroom one bathroom, I mean, X amount of bathrooms, et cetera, but it has to be, you know, of, a, of good quality and, um, you know, of a good standard. 
Mm, no, definitely. And, you know, when we're talking about how the property market looks now, a lot of people say that this this is the time for, for, for buyers. So it's a buyer's market currently. So let's talk about how the uh-huh. market is doing in terms of these affordable or low-cost housing that um, that are being that are on the market. How is the market performing? Uh, are you guys seeing any um, a spike in the uptake? And with COVID, and which would be my second question or follow-up question to say, with COVID happening and and with, with the market changing slightly, how has the, the trend been over, over the past two to three years? So, um, ironically enough, uh, people would assume that obviously when there is a pandemic, um, you know, and there's not much movement, there's restrictions, etc. Um, uh, our industry being the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the property industry will be affected negatively. But um, there is obviously a positive to, to, to um, any pandemic, mm. such as, for example, now COVID. COVID really increased the demand um, of housing. Um, and this was due to um, the, low, the, the interest rate being so low. So obviously more people could apply, more people could now afford to actually go out there and buy a house. Um, and, 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 and also we actually saw a move towards uh, people also investing now in homes because they are now starting to uh, work from home. So instead of uh, renting, they now um, realize that, you know, actually what, I can actually buy a house because now my house is going to be my office. So I don't know, I don't need to commute. I don't actually even need to, if I cannot afford uh, to stay in the area where my office is, I can find a, another alternative because I am work, working from home. And when we're talking credit score, we're talking one of the things mm. that is really, um, for a lot of people, is really something that um, they run away from. Sometimes people don't even want to know what their credit score is. So if, if we are talking minimum um, credit scores and minimum numbers that one should have, you know, before going into uh, um, a home agreement like this, what would you say in as a, as 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 a professional who sits in this and does this almost every day, what are what are those uh, numbers? The cre- the minimum credit score that the person should look out for, or um, should have to either qualify or or actually be granted this home loan. Um, that will be a score of around six hundred and twenty. Um, okay. in banking terms, that's an average risk. So anything more than 620 um, is, is, is more than, um, okay, I mean, you can apply for a home loan, but anything less than 620, um, it's a bit um, risky. So you would need to work on your, on your profile. That is what we, we actually advise um, our clients. So average risk, 620 and upwards um, is an acceptable score. Sure. Um, I like the fact that you, you spoke numbers there. And, you know, when we talk about working, some people might not understand what, what, is, what is necessarily that, that the term work. What, what are the, the, those things that you would advise that one does? Um, I like the fact that you also mentioned that they need to decrease credit as much as possible in terms of mm. um, the debts that they have. Um, talk, t- talk to us about um, those practical things that one can do in order to increase their credit score. And typically, how long would this take? Because um, for some reason, and I'm just perceiving that there's someone out there who's really watching tonight and wants to know what are those things that they could do starting tonight or, or tomorrow where they where they could start you know increasing their credit score to ensure that they are above average and they are able to qualify mm. because they are looking at the 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 description you gave us and the person feels like I mm. fit this like a glove so um just help us with that please okay so i would say um firstly for especially first-time homeowners, um, they wouldn't know where to start. Um, we always advise our clients, for example, if you, you're buying for the first time, you don't have credit, you don't know where to start, you don't know where to go, start by opening um, one or two accounts. Um, preferably a credit card, because a credit card is actually good credit meaning that um you know you you get a credit card you use it but with most banks if you paid within 30 days 
you actually don't get charged any um, interest, but you will be building up a credit record. You can also take out, as I said, um, a store account, any store account, and you take out that store account, you pay it on time, you even pay more than the minimum payment, etc. That is how you actually build up a good credit score. For those that already have um, a credit um, profile, make sure that you pay your creditors on time. This is vitally important. People might think that paying uh, 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 seven days later or 10 days later doesn't uh, make a difference as long as I've paid. But that is, that is not true. You need to ensure that you always pay your creditors on time and you honor your payments because when the banks look at your profile, they always want to know that um, this client will be able to honor um, this, this bond payment. So that is what we always, or I always advise um, clients to do. No, thank you so much for that. And it's such really actionable intelligence. So if you just joined us, we are talking low or, or affordable housing and that suits your needs and how to find it, where it is, and if you qualify it, if you qualify for it rather or not. And I am joined by C. Yam Shongo, who is the sales consultant at Central Development in Johannesburg. So the, the poll for the week this week, or the poll for the day, rather, my apologies, is are you currently living in your dream home? And before I even take the answers, you know, from, from our Facebook family, I want to ask you, Sia, are you living in your dream home currently? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, living, I'm living in my transitional home. <laughs> right. So sometimes you don't, you don't start off living in your dream home. Yeah. You live in a home that you can afford that will be comfortable but also comfortable in your pocket and then the more you 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 get um more income etc that's when now yes. you start looking at your dream home you know your, your first home is not always your dream home Correct, correct. No, definitely. Yeah. I hope you own pro you own private property regularly. You know, checking your dream home because we'll we definitely have it on our listings. <laughs> of course, I've actually been checking more than my dream home. <laughs> So Anelda Everton, who's one of our regulars, are one of our top fans. Shout out to you, Anelda. Um, uh, uh, says she's 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 number one, um, number one for now, but number two is waiting. Uh, which is uh, her dream home is is in Cape Town. Her dream home is definitely in Cape Town. And Kenneth Mochella says yes, he currently is living in his in his dream home, um, but he needs one more. So that's that's how the poll went. And if you ask me, I'm not really sure. I think I, I think I will go with C on this one. That uh, I'm in my transitional home. Before long, I will be living in my dream home. But we can make you move into your dream home if you are a prospective buyer. Um, the, the housing that we are talking about today may just be your dream home, even if it's just for now. So let's talk a little bit more, um, Sia, about area and location. You know, every time I speak to uh, people in the in the property industry, they always talk about location, location, location. Whether we're talking property valuations, whether we're talking buying and selling, investing, location is so important. Let's talk about location. You you you, you mentioned some locations um, um, specifically to 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 your developers, and you said that this is the some of the things that you guys are working on in jo in Johannesburg South. And we just want to know now in terms of location with this kind of housing how important is location and does this affect any way in terms of the way people buy and the way people move and and how things happen there um as you as you already as you've already said location 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 is so important because it needs to be accessible um in terms of schooling it needs to be accessible in terms of um you know amenities where people shop uh, where people work, um, et cetera. And um, the banks, they even give, um, you know, um, an area, the approval, uh, depending on the, the, the surroundings, you know. Um, a, 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 the area also impacts, um, you know, when you decide now to move to your dream home, when you decide to sell, um, prospective buyers will also look at the area. So, um even when we develop as central development, we always look at area because, um, you know, people need to be able 
to not only um, travel to and from work, but also be able to build their lives around the area. That's why we always build around, um, you know, areas that are close to schools, clinics, hospitals, um, shopping malls, etc. cetera, I can go on and on. But um, area is always key. When you are looking to buy, make sure that you look at the area um, because it will even impact the future value of your home. Sure. And um, with with this, um, you spoke specifically, and I know that our our um, our conversation really in um, up till now has been focused on um, people who want to buy to live in. You know, is there any opportunities mm -hmm. that exist in this space for people who are property investors and people who want to buy houses to flip them or buy houses to improve then sell again um, or buy houses, to, you know, to let out? Is there is there any opportunities for such people? Definitely, definitely. Um, we, we tend to think that it, it, investing in property is for certain people or people um, that are well off in life, mm -hmm. which is so untrue. Anyone can invest in property. Um, when I say anyone, it, even with um, as, as little as um, 5,000 rands, for example, you can buy an investment property. Um, we've had so much uptake um, in our current uh, uh, development at Rudy Detroit Security Village, whereby we think an influx of young investors, people um, that have never even bought before, that are staying at home. Um, they're comfortable to stay at home, but they want to invest in property. Um, property investment is 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 the most. It's it's it's, it's the most. Um, how can I put it? It's 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 wealth creation. Mm. Um, you you buy a property, you rent it out to a tenant. The tenant pays your bond. You don't even have to ever move in into that house before you can move on and buy a new property. So there's absolutely a space in affordable housing for um, investors, and um, there is a demand definitely. Thank you so much for that. Um, if you have a question and you are watching us tonight, please do ensure that you you throw those questions on our comments and we will definitely field them. And talking about questions from, from social media, I have one for you, um, Sia. And this, this person is asking, if I'm a foreigner and I want to buy a house, what documents are needed and do I qualify? Yes, you do qualify. Um, it depends on actually your your work permit, um, but if you are in South Africa and you are, um, you know, having a work permit, you can definitely qualify to, to, to buy a property in South Africa. So um, the question is a bit vast. Um, what we can do is even the, 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 the person asking the, the question, they can get my details and then we can look at their documentation and then uh, we can take it from there. Um, they don't have to necessarily buy from us, but I mean, just to assist, uh, we can do that for them. Look at that documentation and tell them, yes, you do qualify to buy. Um, this is how much you'd qualify for. Um, but with, with, with people that are coming outside of South Africa, I have to um, do advise that even if you do qualify to buy, in most cases, the banks will ask for um, a deposit. So you must be ready that um, you will not be getting a 100% uh, bond. Uh, there'll be a deposit required. Um, so you just need to prepare yourself financially. But in terms of documentation, it's so vast that um, I won't be able to cover each and every document. Um, but if they wish, they can just get my details and then we can uh, look at their documentation and, and, and um, advise. Um, and we, we've really been having a good conversation in terms of how um, low, low, low uh, cost housing and affordable uh, housing um, can be accessible to anybody and everyone, whether you're a property investor or somebody who's prospectively looking to go into the market and get that home. So, Sia, let's talk about... Um, advice that you would give to somebody who who's prospectively wanting to go into the market you know wanting to buy this house either for investment or for them to live in what would you advise them to do and um what are those things that they need to look out for you know in in the day and age we live in 
people always need to make sure that they protect themselves, you know, against um, scams, fraudulent activities, and all of these things that are out in, in the in the um, in the industry. So um, just talk to us what advice you would give them and those those pitfalls and downfalls for them to look out for. Okay. So I would I would encourage everybody, um, especially first time homeowners, make sure that you buy from a reputable brand. When I say reputable brand is a reputable um, developer, such as central development, make sure that you buy from a reputable brand, make sure that you do all your checks and balances, uh, make sure that you do your research um do research whoever or whoever you decide to go with and to buy with also i would advise them that um start with something you can afford start with something you, you can afford your first time your first home doesn't have to be your last home that's what i can afford buy with um your future in mind um you can always use your um your first home as an investment. So you can buy your first home um, as you uh, become more, um, you know, you, you have more money in your pocket or more, um, you know, um, you grow in, in terms of um, your career or in terms of work, et cetera. You can then move from that home, um, put it up for rental. So use it as an investment and obviously go and purchase elsewhere. That's why um, it's, it's, it's very important that when you buy, have a, 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 you know, a forward thing, think future-wise. Don't mm -hmm. only buy for now. Think about um, what would I want in the next 10 or 15 years. Um, also, a lot of people have this misconception that because a bond is for 20 years, you need to pay it all over 20 years. You can always pay your bond before a 20 year period. You can pay your bond in, in, in 15 years, in 10 years, in 12 years, depend, it all depends on you. Um, every time you have um, additional funds, that would be a bonus or whatever it may be, take that money, pay it towards your home loan. It really does make a difference mm. in ensuring that you actually finish off your home loan before time. Thank you so much for that. Really, really appreciate you taking our time. And, you know, the nuggets you gave us the, tonight were absolutely amazing and very, uh, very actionable in terms of the way people can now start, you know, coming into the property market and starting that that investment journey or even that 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 house that they're going to live in for now. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight and have a good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And we have reached Bye. the end of our episode tonight where we were speaking about how to find affordable housing that suits your needs. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And hopefully you have gotten some information that will really change the way you are going to approach your next property purchase. Until the next time we see you right here on the Private Property uh, Podcast, have a great night.